Good morning, everybody. Welcome to those of you here in person and to those of, us, those of you joining us virtually from all over the globe. We don't have a moment to lose. 2030 is just six years and nine months away. So I am really delighted that you are here making biogas happen. The week before last, I'm sure you all read that the IPCC published its synthesis report, which synthesized all the scientific evidence that's been assessing the impact of human activity on the planet, our home. It made it abundantly clear that we are in the emergency room on life support and that we're running out of time scarily fast. Indeed, our chances of survival are exceedingly slim. So the, mes the message is abundantly clear. We must reduce carbon in the atmosphere drastically in an incredibly short time frame. Otherwise, large parts of the planet are going to become uninhabitable for humans. And other parts that remain habitable will not really appreciate the large numbers of people coming from those parts that are uninhabitable. Which is why I am really ecstatic that you are all here in this room and listening virtually. You are a critical part of the only solution that can buy us a little more time. This decade, if we cut methane emissions, we will give ourselves 0.2 of a degree. Ton for ton, methane emissions are 86 times more harmful than carbon in the atmosphere in their first 20 years of life. And that's why over 150 countries last year signed up to the Global Methane Pledge, committing to cut their methane emissions by 30% against 2020 levels by 2030. So why are we so important to this mission? Well, if we can capture the 105 billion tons of organic waste that we humans generate every year and recycle those through biogas, obviously those organic wastes are emitting methane as they break down, we can deliver half of the Global Methane Pledge. Today, only 2% of those organic wastes are being recycled. So our mission is clear. We must build all the infrastructure and AD plants that are going to allow us to capture and recycle the remaining 98%. And we need to do that by 2030. As a natural deadline junkie, there's in my view absolutely nothing quite like a deadline to focus the mind. In 1962, John F. Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon. In 1969, Apollo 11 duly landed on the moon with Buzz, with Buzz Aldrin and crew. It took 400,000 people and cost $25 billion. And for those of you good at maths, that took about seven years. Now, our challenge is arguably a bit bigger, but we have a lot more people and we have a tried and tested technology that is here today. The technology has been used since the pharaohs. In fact, I've seen uh, recently that it's been used by the Chinese in minus 300 BC. So this is a technology that has been widely used today and is more than capable of delivering it. Getting Apollo 13 back, some of you remember from the film, was also pretty difficult. And they didn't have years, they had hours. 
but it too succeeded. So we can do it, but we need to be laser focused. We need to communicate effectively, plan effectively, collaborate effectively. We also need to innovate, incorporate best practice everywhere in our, on our plants, in our businesses, through our training in a, and in our diversity programs. And we must standardize, standardize, standardize. If we can put a man on the moon and bring him back again, then surely we can capture and recycle those 105 billion tons of organic wastes in the same time frame. So how are we going to get every government to put in place the regulatory environment we need for those investments to come in fast. But I think we need to marshal our arguments. We need to understand what will fit in with their own political campaigns to either get in or stay in power. We need to remember that we don't just reduce methane emissions. All those organic wastes also contain valuable energy, much needed in the midst of an energy crisis. Indeed, they contain the equivalent of one third of today's natural gas demand. They also contain nutrients and organic matter. That's also much needed in a world where food security is the next biggest crisis just around the corner. And bio CO2. Here in the UK, the biogas industry can produce enough bio CO2 to meet the entire the entire demand for the country. And of course, from an economics point of view, delivering this potential will create 10 to 15 million new green jobs and create a $34 trillion industry. Quite exciting. And of course, it will help people stay living where they do today, helping to reduce migration. So our story really is compelling. And the great news is that it is finally starting to be recognized and investment is starting to flow. We've seen Goldman Sachs recently set up a $1 billion fund to be invested solely in the European biomethane industry. We've seen three of the oil majors make very significant acquisitions, BP, Shell, and Total. And there are other major global players pouring investment into the industry. Indeed, BP's energy outlook uh, most recently reported uh, or forecast a 25-fold increase in the sector by 2050. We are the second fastest growing sector after hydrogen, and I suspect soon we will surpass hydrogen. Our role at WBA is to do what we can to facilitate uh, getting the right regulatory framework in place to ensure that that investment can flow into new plants and infrastructure. So one of our priorities is doing what we can do to open up new markets. That means traveling a lot for me, which is quite fun. Um, I've been uh, to both Abu Dhabi and Amman Sustainability Weeks in January and March, respectively. And I was also at India Energy Week in February. We will also be representing the biogas industry at the Climate and Clean Air Coalition uh, uh, annual meeting in Bangkok in, in May and at the Clean Energy Ministerium in Goa in, in June. And there are various other key meetings happening as well. At India Energy Week in Bangalore, I was really pleased to see or to hear Prime Minister Modi refer to and highlight the importance of waste to value in the context of a circular economy. I think that's the first world leader I've heard say that. And there is already support for biogas in India. So with that support, both in terms of policy and in terms of political leadership, and given that India has now got, that its population has now surpassed that of China, it must therefore be the, have be the biggest potential biogas market in the world. I'm very pleased to announce that we will be hosting 
the first in our series of World Biogas Congress events in India on the 25th and 26th of May. So if anybody's interested in that market, do come and talk to us. At that, at that inaugural Congress, we will be launching a report looking at the market potential in India that we, will, we are preparing together with Invest India, which is the uh, Indian government's uh, agency for uh, investment promotion and facilitation. So I hope to see many of you there with us. We also expect to be hosting with the Brazilian Biogas Association, I can see Gabriel here somewhere, uh, the, uh, a similar World Biogas Congress uh, 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 alongside your 10th uh, anniversary uh, uh, in Brazil in September. We have also now launched what we call our Making Biogas Happen program, which is a series of interlinked initiatives uh, targeted at removing the barriers to growth. The program includes a global biogas framework, incorporating all the regulations that any government really needs to implement so that on the ground you can build biogas plants. It's also obviously critical that uh, every plant is designed, built and operated well. Any plant that isn't causes reputational damage that impacts the whole of the industry. So the other Another part of the Making Biogas Happen program is the International AD Certification Scheme, which is designed to ensure that every plant is designed, built, and operated well. And the third big plank is the training platform, which is designed to make available training so that all those 10 to 15 million people coming into the industry can access the training they need uh, as fast as possible. Hashtag together we can. Now, without further ado, I'm going to, uh, I'm delighted to uh, invite our keynote speaker, Jennifer Sara, for, who is the Global Director for Climate Change uh, Global Practice at the World Bank, who is going to be talking to us about what they can do to support the growth of this sector and how we can mobilize finance uh, to help us meet our, our goal. Jennifer. Jennifer.